I've been around a long time, and I've never seen crime in this bad. Why should you let somebody out when they're just going to go and do, do the same thing again? The criminals come out even worse than they were before they went in. Prisons, they don't work. Crime is getting so bad, I'm even afraid to go to the mall anymore. Seems like we put all this money into the prison systems. It's not doing any good. I'm worried. Why can't someone change these criminals? The uh, only program that helps them once they get out to stay out is uh, Christ and having faith in God. Some of them, they, when they leave here, they take the Lord with them. They, they, they meet him here and get to know him and then take him out in the free world. They don't come back. You have several inmates that choose not to believe in that. Therefore, their life is always in turmoil. So without Christ, chances for rehabilitation are, are very slim. The answer to crime is Christ. Would you agree? I agree 100%. Absolutely. I recognize that unless these inmates have a close walk with God, they will not change their lifestyle. They'll go out and they'll come back. It'll be that proverbial swinging door that we've talked about so many times. In this election year, crime is on many people's minds again. While some statistics are improving, others are getting worse. And the costs to try to rehabilitate offenders is getting higher, seriously straining many states' budgets and many voters' confidence and patience. Is there anything, any program, that really works and doesn't cost a fortune? Neil Davis, warden of Limestone Correctional Facility, Alabama's largest correctional institution, and a 40-year veteran of corrections work, answers that question. And I think you'll see a difference in those people who have been trained, if you will, in religion, and those trained in a vocation. Once they're released from the prison system, those with a vocation are more apt to come back quicker than those who have been trained in the religion. In other words, I, I think what I'm trying to say is that those who have found a, a, a desire, are those who realize there's a higher power, if you will, than us here on, the, on this earth. There's a higher power than warden there's a higher power than our supervisors. There's a supreme power, and that supreme power is God. And those people who have found God, in my opinion, are those people who don't come back to prison. And that's been evidenced. Shirley Loebmiller, who served as warden of Julia Tutwiler Prison, Alabama's largest female correctional facility, and is a 17-year corrections system veteran, agrees. I've participated in all sorts of programs training programs, uh, self-improvement, self-esteem programs, you name it and we've tried it. But until Christ enters into the heart and mind of an individual, we don't change their lives. Warden Ralph Hooks of Limestone Correctional Facility is himself a 16-year corrections veteran and shares their conviction. Here at Limestone Correctional Facility, we teach inmates uh, GED classes. Uh, they're able to obtain their GED. We have nine different vocational trades that the inmates can take also. Uh, the most successful inmates I've seen leave the gates of this prison are the ones that have found Christ and leave here with Christ in their hearts. These are the inmates that are not coming back into the system. Again, Warden Davis. If there's been a change in his heart, a change in his spirituality, if you will, and a change in the families, and he allies himself, he returns to that family, allies himself with that family. They are both now strong in their spirituality, their belief in God. They don't come back. They don't come back. I believe that with all my heart and soul. I believe that with all my heart and soul. Uh, I cannot impress upon the inmates enough that they need to find this in their lives, uh, coupled with their vocational skills. These are the keys to success, and these are what's going to make them future citizens in our country. We can do it through education. We can do it through everything else. But until it is done through the love that we extend to these people through God's Word, we'll never, never accomplish the ultimate goal 
of changing people's lives. Until they embrace the laws of God, then, and only then, will they have a better life. And we're finding that those people, if, if they are sincere, if they involve themselves in the teachings, uh, in their newfound belief, in their newfound spirituality, and their families are a part of it, they don't come back to prison. And without the love of God, we'll never, never implement changes in the corrections system that will truly make a difference where inmates will leave and not come back. Both Warden Davis and Warden Miller recently asked Richard Bland, director of United Prison Ministries International, or UPMI, to make religious materials available for every inmate in their institutions. At the Julia Tutwiler Prison for Women, the inmates' eager response to receive the materials shocked everyone, except the inmates. The chapel is really uh, a place for rehabilitation for the ladies at Julia Tutwiler. And you got to have the Lord in your life in order to survive and stay clean for the rest of your life. But I passed a major milestone, and that's when I gave myself to God completely. And I give all the glory to him, because he changed me from the inside out. I put my truth in God's hand. I put my life in God. I put everything in his hand. You hear me? Oh, yeah. And the Lord showed me, things going to be just fine. I came in with the devil, but I'm leaving with the Lord. What we are doing is trying to get him into us so we can take it on the outside because he's what we need. Hopefully during the time they're here, they will get into God's word because this is going to be the most important thing that happens in their life during the incarceration here. But they want the Lord. They want, they want to know the answers, and Jesus is the answer. We have lots of educational programs. We have a lot of industrial programs. We have a lot of activities. We do special recreation activities. You name it and I have tried it. I see people who have gone out and done everything that they thought would bring them happiness in life. And yet I find that the desire of their heart has not been satisfied because they sought it in all the wrong places. Until they found God, they had no peace, they had no happiness. Correctional officer Edward Nelson tells of inmate Deborah's experience in turning from a hard, bitter death row inmate to a kind, gentle Christian. Bad, but when she found God, things began to change for her because when she first got here, she was on death row. And then she moved from death row to um, life without parole. And now that she's found God, He's granted her a new life. She's been here a total of 17 years, and it just goes to show you how a person that can be sentenced to death by changing their ways and that God in their life, you, anything can happen. Correctional Officer Steve Kissel. But the ones that go back to their, home, their homes, their families, and their, their church, they seem to be the ones that make it on the free will because the Lord's with them. I want the people that come out of prison to be the kind of people I want to live next door to me. Mm -hmm. She wants us to be good people in society, not good inmates. That's right. and, you know, a lot of people say that we get jailhouse Christianity, yeah. but that's not true. We have a time for time out right now, and she does guide us in the way of finding God and finding what we need to find so that we do fit into society when we do live leave here. It's my firm belief that until we introduced every everyone in prison to God and let them know personally of his son's sacrifice for them that we won't bring about change in the prison systems throughout this United States nor anywhere else in the world. UPMI director Richard Bland found the same enthusiasm and commitment at the Limestone Correctional Facility. Many of the inmates he talked to carried Bibles with them and shared their faith openly and one new inmate admitted. That's right. See, I missed something the first time. You better so I'm back now to get what I missed, and that's the law. But will finding Christ in prison really keep that man from coming back? If he, if he believes in God and practices his religion, I believe that, and I've seen that. Richard Bland summarized it this way. So you, we're saying this, that unless a person leaves 
prison with Christ, we are training them to be better criminals. To be better criminals. Warden Hooks agreed that unless an inmate finds Christ in prison... Well, depending on his frame of mind, if he's not involved in Christianity, there's a uh, good possibility that he learns how to do his crime better. These inmates also agree. I believe that the only rehabilitation in prison is through Jesus Christ. After that experience, I, I was a changed man. <laughs> Out that when it comes down to it all in all, Jesus is still the only one that loves you. That's right. No matter what happens no in your way. life. God began to strengthen me, and as God began to strengthen me, he began to move my mind. I had a renewing in my mind. I had a, that prison mentality that began to change in me. I began to understand what life was all about. But had I had the personal relationship with him that I should have had, I wouldn't be here today. So you're saying to me that if the 2,026 men in this prison would accept Christ, and their lives would change. They could go out of here and never come back. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. How big a difference does the program really make? In this program, reformed inmates become powerful 24-hour-a-day influences for change, teaching their fellow inmates to become better citizens, not better criminals. give my all and all. But if you tell people in prison that you're a Christian, you can't get out of anyone's sight. When you go back to your cell, someone's always watching you. The officers, the other inmates, they're always watching you. And we live in a glass house. One lady, Robin, who just left here, she helped lift me up. And another one, I would not call her name, but I call her mama. She been there for me. But all above them, God have been there for me. I even thought about running, escaping. But yet, the Holy Spirit always calmed me down and told me that's not the way. I've always had inmates to come to me and show me that there is help. There is a peace that passes all understanding, and that's Jesus. This one guy, Jamie Martin, he was a uh, woodworker, and he was all the time sitting woodworking, just whistling, singing about the Lord and stuff, and, and uh, he was in the church when I wasn't, and uh, I got to sitting around with him there and, and hearing about the Lord through him does such a program really change inmates for good? Those who have used it have no doubts at all. Are you saying that because of your personal opinion? Or are you saying it because it's your personal opinion as well as what you've seen the results? Uh, it's my personal opinion and the results that I've seen over the years. We have numerous people who would come in and give us vocational training, drug counseling, these are volunteers. But what we have really needed over the years is religious training. I can't say enough about volunteers in the religious area. If we did not have that, I just can't imagine what the recidivism rate that people coming back into the prison would be. Uh, and, and of course, we, uh, we welcome them with open arms when they do come in because we know that they do make a difference in the lives of these inmates. Correctional officer so, Edward so, Nelson tells the experience the of one inmate he knew. He didn't even know how to read until he uh, got the Bible. This inmate told Warden Loebmiller that she was using the Bible to teach another inmate how to read, and with excellent success. Teaching inmates to teach other inmates, that's one key to this program's success. But it also seeks to influence other vital links in the inmate's chain of success, the community and their family. Limestone volunteer chaplain, Charles Baggett. So I, I think we need to be doing more in our prisons, but I, I also think that if we're going to make the real difference that the Christian community can make, that we're going to have to be more involved with these fellows as they come out of prison, that the Christian community needs to be there to receive them with outstretched arms, to take them into our churches, to take them into our communities, and to stand beside them and let them know that we really care and to give them the real chance that they deserve. And I think if we do that, I absolutely believe that we're going to see the return rate in our prison reduced considerably. And, and the family uh, supporting the inmate uh, in his Christian values and, and accepting his Christian values and becoming part of a Christian family is, is very necessary uh, or we will see that inmate return to our prison system. If they continue to uh, go to church and stay in the uh, Christian community, then they're more likely to stay 
away from the prison system again. This is the approach used by United Prison Ministries International. Teach the inmate to teach. Work with and prepare the inmate's family to prepare for his or her release by using the exact same materials the inmate has studied. And encourage the community to accept the inmate back. When Warden Davis first tried this program, he was a bit skeptical. What were the results? And it was a total success. Warden Davis has used it in every prison since, with the same success. Warden Hooks had a similar experience. One of his inmates had beheaded a police officer. Then, while in prison, he claimed that he had found Jesus. Uh, I had some reservations as to whether it was a true uh, regeneration, as we spoke earlier. <laughs> but uh, the inmate has been out now approximately eight years. I see this inmate, and he is still a deacon in his church and he's still preaching the Word of God inside our facilities today. Yet with all the success of this program, how much funding can Warden Davis or any other warden budget for it? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing? Now does that make sense? Nothing. You mean absolutely not one penny? Not one penny. And religion in prison is not something a warden can mandate, unfortunately. It's something the inmate has to find in himself. And through the many volunteers we have, uh, that's our vehicle to get religion to these inmates. I am not funded, my budget. Mm -hmm. None of the funds in my budget uh, or earmarked toward uh, religious programs. Not one penny? None. But yet still, in your opinion, that's the only thing that works. Not the only thing that works, well, I mean, but that's the that only guarantee. Keep, that, well, the well, okay. guarantee. The only guarantee, guarantee. guarantee yeah. that keeps them from yeah. coming back. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Regardless of the rehabilitative programs we offer, regardless mm -hmm. of the training, mm -hmm. regardless of the vocational training, the educational training, I still believe that's not a guarantee that the man won't come back to prison. Mm -hmm. But the guarantee is, is that if he has found Jesus Christ and he is a part of him, his daily life, then he won't come back. He will not come back whether he's had the vocational or the educational training at all. He will not come back to prison. That's my honest, firm belief. True rehabilitation. Reformed inmates as citizens. That's what we all want. And that's exactly what regeneration programs like this one are producing. They are transforming first-time offenders into one-time offenders who never come back to prison. My name is Tony Hall, I'm 41 years old. For the first 20 years of my life, I committed and was a part of over 3,000 felonies, incarcerated over 14 times in eight different states. But I started studying the Word of God in prison, and I never went back. Now, some 20 years after my last incarceration, it is my privilege to be able to work with people to help them overcome antisocial behavior through studying the Word of God and living it out. I know this program works. We should put the Bible in the hands of every person in the prison's institutions, and I know it will change lives. The United Prison Ministries International program is truly rehabilitating inmates in prisons all around the world, in countries like Russia and Romania. General Ion Kish, Romania's Minister of Justice and Penitentiaries, says the program has been so successful in his prisons, the prisoners are changing so dramatically, disciplinary problems are almost non-existent, making it easier to effectively control inmates with fewer personnel. After seeing a video about the dramatic impact of UPMI's program at Warden Loeb Miller's prison, U.S. Congressman Charles Taylor of North Carolina wrote, Any program that is successful in turning inmates away from crime deserves consideration. Representative Roscoe Bartlett of Maryland agreed. I believe it would be foolish for prison and elected officials to ignore a successful initiative like this. This program works because it dovetails perfectly with and greatly strengthens the rehabilitation and vocational programs already in place in our prisons today. It modifies behavior in a positive manner, and inmates are not forced to cooperate. They can accept the program or reject it. Volunteers implement the program, and local businessmen are eager to support it, 
so the institution has no added funding burdens. Many institutions using the program are actually seeing fewer repeat offenders and are able to lower costs by managing their inmates with fewer personnel. How important is it to introduce our inmates to this program? Uh, otherwise, when he leaves here, he does not have Christ. He will probably go to the nearest convenience store, rob the place, and he's back with us again, and the cycle continues. They've been involved in drugs. They've gone through drug rehabilitation programs. They've had no education. They've earned a GED. They've had no skilled labor abilities, and we've given them vocational training. But if we haven't given them God, they're going out and they're going to come back. Because without God, there is no hope and there is still criminal activity for them to be involved in. Stop the revolving door. Christ is the answer to crime. I agree 100%. Absolutely. The number of return offenders continues to increase. Whatever the number is in your institution, whether it's 10%, 20%, 30% or more, wouldn't you like to save those dollars that it costs to house and care for those return offenders? I know that the program we've talked about works. I've seen it work in Tutwiler and I've personally been to Romania and seen that it works there too. Won't you contact me or Warden Davis? The telephone number and fax number will appear on your screen. Thank you. Because you'll want to learn more about this successful program, you can contact me, Warden Shirley Loebmiller, retired, or Warden Neil Davis at telephone number 205-755-4744 or fax 205-755-4774. Or you can write P.O. Box 8, Verbena, Alabama, 36091. Our internet address is www.upmi.org.